And now, it's Boomer Life, lifestyle discussion designed to make your life more engaging, meaningful, and complete. Celebrating the baby boomer generation, this is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. All I want to do is have some fun. I got a feeling I'm not the only And welcome to Sea Isle 650's Boomer Life. And today we're talking with Candy Ho from... Element Lifestyle Retirement, and also Veronica DeConcesso. How'd I do? Great. Now, last time we had to work on the name. It's yeah. a tricky <laughs> name, right? <laughs> so it's great to have both of you back in studio. And we're talking about uh, Opal by Element. And Candy, with you first, where I, I, I say it every time, I walk by the mm-hmm. site at King Edward and Canby regularly when I take my dog for a walk. And the hole is bigger in the ground. Yes, that's right. And uh, so you're getting sort of ready to put the footings and everything in. That's so, right. So yeah. that's and we ex- even did a little block tour to let the neighbors know and what oh, to great. expect. And yeah, it's I- it's funny even the the neighbors across the lane are interested in purchasing an opal too oh really yeah yeah well, there you go you can upgrade yeah. and uh veronica you are dealing with people who are going to be potentially moving in and people <clears throat> who have already signed up and how's that going how far along are you think with the, the process of of uh you know having the building full i think it's going really really well and there's more and more interest levels mm-hmm. um that have uh come along the way and so people are just calling in asking when is it going to be done completed we want something now when, when is it um uh between spring february, of, february, february spring, yeah, spring of 2019 yeah. and mm-hmm. you had a date a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. about uh people could put a deposit yes. down for because uh, there are yeah. owned units yeah. and rental units and yeah. the rental units opened up so how mm-hmm. did that go oh that went so well so may 20th was our launch yes. uh, and we have uh 20 of the units already reserved and so more people uh with appointments uh and the day itself other than uh making open uh the reservations for rental we also had some really great little events going on so the farm to table demonstration was amazing and our um, executive branding chef came out and did a demo with like spot prawns and mm, all that fun spot stuff prawn and, season, yeah. and, yes. and shared his recipe and all the secrets and people were really engaged asking questions and aside from that though we also had um, uh, a healthcare uh, funding solutions group called Living Well Solutions mm-hmm. which was so eye opening even myself and my dad were like wow and what we does asked that, so many what, questions and, well, could you kind of give us a oh yeah uh, quick uh, yeah. synopsis of what they do so they um kind of they work with mm, 20 different uh I guess, uh, financial products or solutions or other providers. They're kind of, um, they try to tailor to each each family's uh, situation, mm-hmm. but they really uh, brought to light how proactive planning is so important because they gave actually three direct comparisons of uh, scenarios where e- that each family had exactly the same amount of savings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And some, uh, that scenario that they presented was actually they had a lot of savings. And without the proactive planning, the two that didn't do the proactive uh, planning, uh, when they came up, uh, had a situation, healthcare situation, their um, savings completely dwindled, right? Depleted. Yeah. Depleted, none left. So the, and it, I'll, I'll just actually tell you what that amount was. Quite frightening, actually. It was a million dollars of savings. Mm-hmm. And yeah. actually, every year they had an income, uh, passive income uh, of $71,000. And so, even then, mm. it went down the drain so, with, so f- when uh, care hit. Em- emergency f- medical situations yeah. that needed yeah. to be addressed outside of what yeah. we get covered here. Yeah, and they kind of uh, brought to light also that uh, when we think, you know, it is wonderful, we have universal health care and everything, but even the government-funded um, uh, residences that First of all, they have a long wait list. But even when you get in, it's not free. Mm. No, it's 80% of your income, no matter what your income is. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. So you still have to pay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, 80% of your income. If your income is $2,000, it's 80% of $2,000. If your income is literally $71,000, it depletes that as well. Um, And then other than that, they and <laughs> so many things. I was just blown away. At seventy one, your RSP is mandatory for you to take out, yes, and it's yes. mandatory yes. that you have to pay those taxes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So people don't understand. And then they think they have RSP, they have TFSA. They've been diligent about saving, but actually, those things cost you to take out, or it also cost you to put in. Um, so they uh, brought up the third scenario where somebody had the same kind of uh, savings. 
But instead of just having the TFSA and RRSP, they also put aside 1% of their savings into, um, I guess you would call health care insurance. Mm -hmm. And with that health care insurance, not only did they not deplete, they saved like a quarter million dollars from having that insurance in place. And she, instead of going into government funded care or nonprofit care, they were living in a retirement residence where it was happy and she was living well. So I keep on saying how many people um, hold back on, in, on living this lifestyle that we hope more people can enjoy because they think that they cannot afford it. But in fact, if you do some proactive planning, not only can you afford it, you can do that and still continue to have savings. You can do that and need care and still continue to not to, to have those savings in place and have more to pass on to your family. Well, the interesting thing is you say it's a large number. It's a million dollars. Now, mm -hmm. that is a big number. And mm -hmm. when, you know, if I win, if, if I want a million dollars, the famous mm -hmm. uh, Bare Naked Lady song sounded like so much money <laughs> in the 90s. But someone sells a house in Vancouver, mm -hmm. that's a million dollars. That's a million dollars. And mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like, And a lot of people will say, oh, I'm fine. I, I'm like in a better position than most people, they'll think that. But when stuff hits and mm. you haven't planned, no matter how much or how little you have, we all get hit. Mm -hmm. So it really is just getting to those resources and doing some proactive planning. And it's all tailored to individual situations. And so I'm really proud and happy to that at our center, we really aren't about just selling and, and renting out our units. It's not just for us. I really hope to be able to help more families that they can come for free mm -hmm. and just get a little bit of education and, and um, uh, just Find know solutions. what's there. Yes, mm -hmm. a solution about what, what they can approach and, and not be to help like they they have a fear about how much uh information they need to give out or how much work it is for them to wrap their heads around it but so, it's but so us, worth it so yeah. tell us where the um discovery center is it's at um city square uh that's uh 12th and canby mm -hmm. and it's unit 130 mm -hmm. so that's upper level shops at the very corner of 12th and canby below right canby. near city hall that's right. And yeah. uh, if you enter from Canby, it's at Kins Market. Up, uh, go, at that entrance is Kins Market. You go at one level. If you go in from parking, you press upper level shops. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. that. Starbucks <laughs> and Curran. And the other, thing we had, the other thing we had and was Safeway. yoga. Yeah. Yes, a little bit further from Safeway. But. Yeah. Uh, we had yoga as mm -hmm. well and uh, chair yoga. It was uh, amazing. Like a lot of people were like, oh, I didn't know what this was. And they felt yes. really good after. And so um, that instructor that we had, she's actually going to be having a standing calendar of uh, free yoga sessions at our center throughout the summer. And yeah. did you play the piano? I, I, uh, candy, piano. I was like, uh, I, I keep on hearing Candy's as a really, you know, proficient uh, <laughs> yes, pianist, and is. I want to experience this. <laughs> You're going to have a big grand piano in the front of Opal. Yes, we Opal. will. Yes, Are you going to play it? Uh, yes, we will. Will. I will, for sure. We're going to record it and upload it. Sure. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Veronica, you have been dealing in this industry for how many years? Uh, this year will be 27 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. But you're only 28. Only How did you... Oh, uh... <laughs> I wish I was 28. <laughs> Love so, it. Um, what have been some of the most satisfying experiences um, in independent living for you? What can you give us, like, what, <sighs> the, what gives you joy every day? You know, I, I'm just really grateful to be able to um, have the opportunity to meet residents, um, find solutions for them, advise them, <coughs> um, because I think many residents have a struggle of where do I begin? Mm -hmm. um, they have lived in this home for maybe 50, 65 years uh, brought up their children. Now they're empty nesters. The children leave, but still have their or user mom's uh, place or father's place as storage. Um, <laughs> the old garage. So they, yeah. yeah, the old garage. Can I leave my Don't stuff Don't tell me there? they're still getting their mom to do their laundry. That's the, <laughs> that's a no-no. They come over and do the laundry now. Um, but I think um, the world becomes a little bit smaller for them as um, one ages, and perhaps there's there might be some challenges could be hearing challenges, sight challenges, and it makes just picking up and going out a little bit more difficult. But, you know, when you work at Opal or a beautiful uh, retirement community such as Opal, you get to give them an opportunity um, to live the life that they so desire. So in my past experience, it always has been, you know, I'm giving you an opportunity. Let's see how we can make it work. So the fear is I don't have the money. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with the stuff? How am I going to start 
you know, getting rid of all these mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to provide solutions. They move in and they're so happy and said, Veronica, I don't know how I could have done this by myself. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so how do you do that? I have a friend of mine, by the way, and she has a declutter business. Mm-hmm. Often it's someone passes away and they don't want to deal with going right. into the house. So mm-hmm. they, they go through everything mm-hmm. and they make piles of garbage, uh, keepsakes and other items. And then the family goes in and says, okay, keep that, get rid of that. But they go in and they clean out the house. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you find people like that? Wes, all the time. Yeah. But even a step before that mm-hmm. is I see myself down I don't see myself downsizing from let's say 7,000 square feet to maybe a thousand square feet they don't see that like where do they put their stuff I have things that my husband and I purchased they're of sentimental value Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we do have professional downsizers that go in with a map on their iPad and actually put in the pieces Mm -hmm. that they so desire to bring with them Mm -hmm. would it work will it not work so the Mm -hmm. the china cabinet if that's very important to you we can we're going to try to make that work right right Mm -hmm. and get them to see it come back um go to the community and actually put some tape on the floor so that they can see their furniture Mm -hmm. and then the process makes it a little bit easier Mm. and provide solutions as to maybe some things that are of sentimental value or of value and maybe we can auction them off so that you can get a little bit of money from it Mm -hmm. there's so many little things boxing things Mm -hmm. providing boxes it's the human personal Mm -hmm. touch Mm -hmm. you know that's really really important and phone calls texting emailing um, I get that throughout the entire process. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's a gratifying. lot of hand-holding too, right? Mm-hmm. It is, and I love it. And I've made home visits. Exactly. I've had cups I of teas. That. I've had dinners. Um, if they have a, a favorite Italian restaurant, we go there. Mm-hmm. And we're going to make it, we're going to talk and have a conversation. They become my family. And sometimes I invite other residents to come along mm-hmm. so that they can socialize and make friends. So mm-hmm. when the actual moving day happens... They're already there having coffee and tea and they've, they've made a friend or two. So the transitioning process is a lot easier. Mm-hmm. All right. That's the voice of Veronica De Canseso. And we have Candy Ho here as well from Opal by Element. And we're going to talk about a, a specific story um, and, and what it meant to you and how it, it, it worked through the system. And you're, these people are going to be excited to be moving into Opal when it opens in uh, 2019. Next on CL650. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.